Hello, my name is Trider. Welcome to part two of the Roman Amphitheater tutorial. Let's pick up right where we left off. All right, we had just finished this phase over here. So let's move on to the next one. Now, in the last one, we did finish one complete section, approximately one third of the amphitheater up to this point here. So we will now be focusing in on these, this two block slice here as we go around. As you can see here, we are placing more column bases. And the very good news for these is they are all directly above the column bases that you placed the first time. So that block here corresponds to uh, this block right here. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that these column bases are sitting directly on top of the last ones. And indeed, this will be true for the third layer. So the outer layers are just three layers of uh, the colonnade that you have already built surrounding the amphitheater, and they are stacked directly on top of each other. So for this, it's going to be really easy. You just measure where you built your columns before. And if you want to get a head start, you can build from here all the way to probably here to the top of the um, Corinthian capital there on top of there. And you, of course, want to do this for all of the columns that go all the way around the amphitheater, like so. And, of course, behind that, you can see here, we do have another wall. Now, the wall, we have cobble first and then a layer of stone bricks. And then behind that, we have just a, a basing of diorite on either side of the pathway here. And, of course, you've already made your stairways, and we're going to be finishing the first set of stairways from the first level down here to get all the way up here. So uh, this point here, this is, this, is, this is where our center line passes through the building on the short side. And we have our other center line that passes through on the 99 block wide section over here. So I'm going to go through and count out an arc for that of you, or rather for you. Uh, but first, let's take a top-down view for those of you that would rather build by that. A good slow pan all the way around the structure here. And then I will go back and we will count out the arcs of those with the red wool. And we'll take a look at the detail on the emperor's box last. So over here, we have our outer wall. And I think uh, the dot right on this, as you can see, is just placed directly behind this. So I'm just going to count out the outer wall. From our center line, we have block one, two, three, what, six, three, three again, two, two, one, two, one. And then a diagonal run of one, two, three, four, five, two, one, one, two, 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 fourth, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to get to the center line right here. And of course, you just mirror all of that again, going around the other arc and do the entire thing for the other three sections of the ellipse here. So I'll show you that whole thing from the top down. It's one of the more complicated phases because we're laying out the tunnels now. Over here, we have the uh, last level of seating that we're going to have. And I think that this is, this is, this is just a couple of blocks. So uh, we have our center line right here. So I'm going to show you this very slowly from the top down close in like there i think um with the double slabs and the diorite it is going to be easy to see what to do there at a glance with those you're just leaving little gaps for the passageway so you can get to the um, tunnel behind those and then over here, we have the detail behind here for the emperor's box. It's uh, not complicated. As you can see here. 
and let's take a look at the site over here that doesn't have the Emperor's box. And I believe you should already have this built. So on top of that, you want to put a band of diorite and then a band of stone bricks and do that all the way around the ellipse like you see done here to make a little boundary wall separating the first layer of seats from the second. And once that is done, I think we can move on now to the next phase. So because of what I said about the colonnade, remember we're just stacking them up now. You already know how to build one of these, so you're just going to be building two more. So I'm not going to directly remark on the columns anymore because you already know how to do, to how, how to do those. Um, behind here we have the wall. We are extending this up two more blocks just with cobblestone, but you're doing this directly on top of only the diorite on the inside here. So this ring of diorite that you built as a baseboard going around the tunnel here, you want to just put two blocks of cobblestone on top of that all the way around. No need to count that one out. Uh, but I do need to give you a view of the seating. So we have our center line running through here on the 88 block wide side. I think it was, it was 80 something. It's the short side. So I will give you a view of that close in of what you are doing with the blocks here. You're mostly just placing them in almost the same patterns, but you're stepping them back a little bit. Like you see here, we have a little archway to get to the tunnel behind here, behind the seats. Another a bank of seats here, another archway, another bank of seats, and an archway, and some seats here. And these are going to be a little bit different because we have the passageways behind the Emperor's box back here. Done like so. And let me just give you a view of the tunnel from the back. So you can see under the seats, we're just filling that in with solid cobblestone on top of the diorite. In some places, the seats are hanging over just a little bit. And a back here around to our center line. So let's take a view of that over here without the Emperor's box. Here is what uh, this seating arrangement looks like. It's just a straight run of seats, really. It's nothing too complicated. And the tunnel behind it is the same also. All right, so detail over here for the pediment behind the Emperor's box. We just have a little... A uh, small triangular thing here, some upside down stairs. We are beginning to build in the capitals for our four Corinthian columns here, upside down stairs to represent the acanthus leaves. As you see done here, four of those, just uh, pilasters attached to the cobblestone. And here's a view behind that here. And just uh, simple squared off tunnels behind here. All right, let's take a view of this all from the top down. And we will go on to the next phase. So I think for this, this uh, might be finishing the seats, actually. You'll be glad to hear that. Uh, over here, of course, we have our columns being ex extended up on the exterior, like I said. The wall is going up. This is precisely on top of the last cobblestone. The two blocks you made, you're just putting a band of stone bricks and then a band of cobblestone and filling in uh, all the rest of that between there and the gap for the seats with the cobblestone. So you already know the measurement of this arc. So I think let me go through here and give you the measurement of this one. So here is our, our center line on the short side. Counting this one with block one, two, three, four, five, six, then three, three, two, one, 
2, and then I diagonal run of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, uh, probably, probably 3, then 3 again, a third 3, 5, and then a very long run of 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that eighth block will get you to the center line running through the 99 block wide face over here. All right, so let me go back over here and give you one last completed view of the entire second row of seats, as you see done here with the double slabs. Of course, as we go through here, we have little, uh, little stone brick dividers between those to separate out the banks of seats from one another. I believe in Roman times, of course, they all had uh, Roman numerals carved above the entrances and everything, so you would know which seats you had bought a ticket for. Over here, here's a uh, detailed view of the uh, archway for the Emperor's box back here. We just have a simple, simple cobblestone box back here. At this level, you can tell we are also roofing off the passageway behind the seats. Could This was, of course, three blocks tall. We finished all of that on the last phase, and on this one, you're just roofing it over with a sheet of cobble, and then um, probably more cobble, but also in some areas, some stone bricks as well. All right, view over here for a little bit more of the pediment behind the Emperor's box. We have our completed... Corinthian pilasters here, and we're building a, 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 a cobblestone entablature on top of that. And that is going to be what? From this point here, one, two, three, five, eleven blocks there, and then one, two, three, four, five, six blocks to get to the center line running through there, so you can double check your work on that. And of course, you can see we just have a plain box here in the middle. It's just, this is just part of the passageway, so there wasn't any need to get uh, too complicated on that. Here's the view of the other side without the Emperor's box attached to it. As you can see, just uh, straight runs of double slabs and cobble and stone bricks. Nothing too complicated. So let us go on to the next phase over here. This should be a very easy phase. You're of course extending all your columns up, You're extending your wall up again, and the one to two uh, ratio of two cobble to a layer of stone bricks, and then two cobble and a layer of stone bricks here, as you see, that we have been doing. On the inside, the arc that I counted out last time with the, the red here, you then want to place on top of those stone bricks a band of diorite, and then another band of stone bricks, and you want to do that just stacking it directly on top all the way around of the amphitheater. There's only some small detail over here for the interface for the Emperor's box. Of course, your band of uh, diorite extends around the entablature for the Emperor's box, but we do have a cornice up here of upside down stone brick stairs to complete the entablature there. And let me give you a view inside this. We're just roofing this off with a very simple uh, coffer design of cobblestone. And there, there is also some diorite on the inside here as well. All right, let me go and give you a view over here of that without the Emperor's box. Very simple. And we will go on to the next phase. So over here on, on all your columns, you are putting again the acanthus leaves, the upside down cobble and then stone brick stairs just like you did down here you're doing all of that again same deal behind here for the walls and then the two layers of cobble and that is just going to be a one a one block thick shell of cobble now by the way because we are putting in another series of colonnades on the inside of the building uh, just just for decoration's sake so here is our center line running through here, and you can use this to help uh, place the columns. So you can see here we have a column attached there and there. You already know how to build these bases, so I'm not going to remark on that. We have another 
column being placed here. One there. One here, sort of on a diagonal. One there. Here. Right there. Another here. In general, the spacing for these columns is going to be two blocks. Two blocks there and there. It does get a little bit more messy when we do the, di the diagonals. So let me go back and just measure the spacing out for you there. Like so. With this here, so you can double check that. And then over here we have the bit for the emperor's box. But let's go back over here real quick to the other side without the box. You can see we just have two more columns and they are placed directly behind the ones on the exterior in line with those. But as you go around the other ones, they, they get uh, bent quite a bit. So I'm showing you all of this here from the top down without the, the red on it and everything. And there we go, that's one quarter. Over here, let's take a look. We are building the, the tiled roof for the decorative pediment behind the emperor's seat. And let's take a look at that from the front, actually. So we're doing the same design that we always do with the triangular uh, pointy roof on top here for the pediment. And we are overhanging the cornice here on the sides. This is, this is called a raking cornice with the stone brick slabs like so. And we of course have some more slabs and full blocks on the inside here. And these these here are the, are the full blocks in it, and in between those we have uh, the upside down, I mean the upside down, the uh, slabs as you see done here and behind that we just have solid uh, die right there. Along the side here we just have a very simple alternating pattern of uh, nether bricks, of uh, nether brick slabs and red nether brick, although I have now changed my texture pack with the upgrades. So these are actually now, uh, uh, I think they are deep stone, t no, deep, deep slate tiles. I believe it's going to take me a little while to remember all the new names for stuff. Now, but I went back and I made this change from the black stone um, because I, I really like how the uh, deep slate tiles pair with the red nether brick. It's, uh, it's not quite the same texture, but it is rather close. They complement each other very nicely. So for your roofing materials, I would suggest that you switch over to this material here if you want to. And we do have some small details of some two block tall diorite acroterion on the sides of the buildings at the front and the back here. And of course at the back we just have another copy of what we did at the front except it's just uh, slammed into the back of the uh, Colosseum here. Although I suppose if it was going to be more, um, more faithful to how the Romans would do things when they would just slam things into the back of it, it should probably be just a straight wall and not even decorated. Uh, but I just copied and pasted that so it wasn't any extra effort to do. So in, in, in here we just have a straight cobblestone uh, ceiling for this little vestibule here behind the stairs that go down to the emperor's seat. All right, so I think we have talked about all of that enough. Let's go to the next phase. So we are now putting the elliptical entablature on top of the second tier of the colonnade. And of course, you will be relieved to know that the counting for all this has been done. So you are building this two block section that you see here. This is the exact same as that right there. And you want to build all of that that you built around here. Just stack it again for the second level up here. And when we get to it fairly soon, the third level is going to be exactly the same on the exterior. Uh, the interior is a slightly different matter. Take a look at that under here. By the way, we do have a slight undercut under here 
for the um, when you're putting on the cobble, you want to leave a, 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 a in general in most places a two block wide gap, and then just roof that over with stone bricks, and then put a little band of stone bricks back behind that behind here, and just wrap it around the cobble or the walls that you have been building, just a one block wrapped around all the way around as you see done here. And at some places it will be uh, it will be a little bit closer than in others, but that's okay. It's just a decorative element. On the inside here, you've already placed the foundations for the pillars on the inside, and these are all copies of the same pillar design that we have been using. So you just want to go around and uh, stack those up. And behind that, you can see we are doing the banding of the cobblestone and the stone bricks again, like so. And of course, you're doing that just all the way around the interior of the ellipse, right on top of the cobblestone walls that you previously built. And back here, we can see back behind the emperor's box here. A little a detail of that. Just uh, mesh it in to the walls behind there. And here is the uh, completed um, decorative pediment behind the emperor's seat here. Just like so. And back behind here as well. I think we're just going to have a little, little decoration like that over there. I think. And you can see we just have a simple alternating pattern of half slabs and full blocks of the tile, the deep slate, and the red nether brick, like you see done here. And I think once we do that, that's probably going to complete the emperor's box as well. We have a nice, suitably grand pediment for him to sit behind on the diamond throne here and decide which gladiator lives or dies. Although, fun fact, for that, they did not do the um, the, the uh, thumbs down like you see in the movies. They would actually put their, their thumb against their throat, uh, meaning that uh, they should, well, well, you get the idea. Uh, not dwell on that too much. Over here, for the next phase, we are starting our uh, second level of the colonnade. So this, what you did here for the upside down stairs here for the cornice on the entablature, that is of course the exact same as what you did down there. Just stack it up on top of that, directly on top, all the way around. And you can see we're placing the foundations for the next, the next and last level of uh, the colonnade on the exterior. And these of course all sit directly on top of the second level, which sits directly on top of the third level down there, rather the first level that we made. And behind that, you then want to be putting in a double thick uh, cobblestone wall. You can follow the cobblestone on the interior here. It uh, doesn't look like I did a third banding of stone bricks behind here, actually. I wonder why I missed that. Take a look at it in a minute. Uh, anyway, uh, but you can follow that design and just put a double thick wall of cobblestone that you see behind there. We kind of have to average it out in some places on the inside over here. So I'll just slowly show you all of that as we go around here. All right, we of course have our second center line running through this point over here, and here is going to be the details, the finishing details for the top of the decorative pediment for the emperor here, and we'll have one additional block of diorite placed right there, and that will finish that off entirely. All right, fairly quick phase there. I think the next phases are gonna go somewhat quickly also. So on the interior here, we have a where we did our cobble, we have then a band of stone bricks on top of that, and then we're going back to a one block thick layer of 
couple. I think uh, that's obviously why I moved this here. So we break our rule of having the one to two and we have a three block cobblestone wall band there. And then we go back to our stone bricks and then to our couple. And on the inside here, you're just extending up the um, columns on the inside as well. So I'll give you a view of this, I think from the outside. From this angle here, maybe a little bit lower down. Like so. Bending the walls in the shape of the ellipse all the way around. Like you see done there. And that's all there is to that phase. We've already finished a lot of the hard work with building the seats and the uh, pediment there. So now I think we can go rather quickly up to the level where we start building the awning over the roof probably. So in the next phase, as you can see on the out here, where you built your, your cobble, you're stacking that up with more cobble and then a layer of stone bricks on the outside of the walls here all the way around, like you see done there, just right on top. On the inside here, you're building out now the capitals for the Corinthian columns on the inside here. All of those, like you see done there, same pattern that we have done all the way around the amphitheater there. All right. Next phase, exterior here, same deal. You're a building now just two layers of cobble. On top of that, you're extending up the... And on the inside, we have a, another elliptical entablature we're building, same design that we have been using with the cobble and the diorite, like you see done here. We're wrapping that all the way around, and I should trace uh, this out for you, I think. So from our center line on the narrow side over here, we will count one, two, three, what, six, three, three, two, one, two, then a diagonal run of one, two, three, four, five, six, two, one, two, one, two, three, three, three again, five, and then what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to get to our center line over here on the long side. All right, and you want to do that first with cobblestone and then with diorite like you see done there, and then just fill all the rest of that in between the interior and the exterior with uh, cobble. All right, next level here, we are starting to build out the awning. So of course the awning, this is the covering for the top of your Colosseum to cover in, in shade down here, the people sitting in the seats so they can enjoy some nice cool shade while they see gladiators fight to the death down here on the sandy arena floor. Uh, except if you're, if you're unfortunate enough to be sitting in these seats over here, uh, you're, you're, you're not spared from the glare of the sun. Uh, indeed, it looks like the emperor himself is just catching a, the edge of the sun here based on how this is set. Although I imagine they probably make his box, they'd probably be over here in the shade. Hmm. I'm not sure about that, actually. I'd have to check into that. All right, so on the side over here, we're, of course, building out again the uh, capitals here for the Corinthian columns, the third tier. The walls of those, again, extending straight up with the pattern of the stone bricks and the cobble, like you see done there. Let's take a look at this from, I think, underneath first. So underneath here, we have, of course, upside down uh, stone brick stairs to represent the cornice of our, the interior entablature. And you were just putting this directly in front and on top of the diorite that you did here. You want to, you want to, um, you know, bend it out like, uh, like this pattern here, just, just like you would place the, the red wool here just directly in front of the diorite. But make sure you place the uh, the blocks here that bend it around like that. You want to do that with the stone brick stairs. But just wrap them around, all the way around the interior of the ellipse. 
And uh, beneath that, we do have some oak beams to support the awning that are going uh, out a little. Uh, they come. Th these are going to be two blocks in thickness, by the way. When, when we look at them from the surface up here, all of these, the, the, the radial spokes here, these are going to be two blocks in depth from this point here. And I think what's going to be the best way, firstly, let, just let me show this to you. From the top down, I think with, I don't think there's too many blocks here that you can't see the counts of these and replicate them for yourself. The fences and the uh, oak planks and the, the red wool here are all, uh, I think high contrast enough that you can see the block counts without me needing to go around and do them. So I'm just going to give you long, slow looks here at these on the sides here. And over here is the, the long side over the Emperor's box here. And once you do a quarter of that, of course, the awning for the other three quarters is exactly the same, just rotated and then mirrored. Like you see done there, here's the, there, here's the whole thing from the top down at a glance. And you can see the, des the design of this. We're just doing, we're doing the oak as support. And in between those, we're doing the oak fences as sort of pins to hold in the uh, wool here in the center, or rather the, uh, uh, the red coral, which I have uh, used. I use that as my wool block texture because I think it looks better. And I think uh, with that, we can go on to this next phase over here. So we're in the home stretch now. We have just a couple of phases left to go. So for the entablature here, this is of course representative of that block there is the same as this block is down here. So if you want to go ahead from here and build out the rest of the entablature for the third layer of columns, you can go ahead and get a head start on that. Of course, the, the ceiling behind that, that's going to be exactly the same as what you built back down here, you're just stacking it again for that whole thing there. The only uh, new stuff in here is going to be the details for the awning. So let me just give you uh, good slow looks at this. First for the perimeter out here. We have some oak fences being used as pins to hold in the, uh, the awning to the rest of the superstructure. Like you see done here. Around the sides here, you're just building up the, the oak blocks and inserting the pins. And here we have uh, directly over the emperor's box down there. And these, they are built up a little bit more on the edges on the outside here, but they thin out as we go to the interior in here. So let me just give you low glancing views of this. We did the hard work on this already with placing the wool and the uh, interior ellipses for those. So let me give you a view from the top down of a quadrant of this. So you can see all that at a glance. And now for the whole thing. All right. Next phase, I think you probably already ahead of me and you have built the exterior of the entablature here, the last level of that with its ceiling there. Behind that, we're just filling it in with cobblestone like you see done here until it matches the interior of the ellipse down there. And if I'm not mistaken, that is just the same wall that we started building down there that's just extended straight up to this point back here. And there are just some small details over here of a little bit more, a few blocks of oak, uh, oak planks 
as you see inserted along the walls here. And then that will finish off the uh, large structural elements. And that will complete the entire awning over the structure. All right, once we have done that, we are now doing our next to last phase where we're doing a bit of decoration on the top here. And we're doing this with uh, directly behind where you place the, the cornice here for the uh, entablature for the third phase. Behind that, just place a ring of stone bricks like you see done here and fill the rest of that in with straight cobble behind that there. We'll talk about the diorite in a moment. On the inside, you're doing the same. You're putting uh, stone bricks one block farther back from the cobblestone wall here that you built, and then one block farther back from that, you are building in just a ring of diorite like you see done here. And I don't think I really need to count that out. It's fairly uh, straightforward and self-explanatory. You see, you can see you're just putting that uh, one block farther back of stone bricks and then one block farther back from that, a, an elliptical ring of diorite which should look like that there. And on the exterior from that, you can see we have a bunch of little blocks of diorite. And that is because I think uh, we should go on to the last phase for that one. It'd be easier to explain. So over here, there's a bit of grass I forgot to fill in. But over here, we are doing some more of these little decorations. And these are just, uh, these are the same little decoration that we put on top of the, the emperor's box over there, but we are doing it as an elliptical band all the way around the top here. So you can see for the last time, here is our center line on the narrow side, and you can use the stone bricks, the elliptical band that you already placed, to help cite these. So you're building one of these, this little five block decoration of diorite, and then skip a block and build another one. Skip a block and build another one. And on the side here, we are doing the same thing, except we, you know, we now have to follow the band of the stone bricks and the, the cobble here. So you can see we have to bend it back a little by placing that there. And then we do that again over here. And then on the sides here, we have to make a diagonal one like that, another, another diagonal, a third diagonal. And then we are staggering that one again there and here and there. And here also. And then a flat one. Then another staggered one. This one's staggered forward. And then on the sides here, we just have three straight ones. And this over here is, for the last time, our center line on the long uh, 99 block wide face there. So once you have done all of this for who knows how long, Hopefully, then your Roman amphitheater will be complete. So I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial for the Roman amphitheater. This is a bit more survival friendly. Well, you know, as much as I can be uh, compared to the large Colosseum that I already made. But this one is much more uh, traditionally faithful to the Flavian amphitheater in Rome itself. Although smaller versions of that were also built out in the provinces. So this is not uh, too far off from a traditionally accurate Roman amphitheater, as, uh, as far as accurate as we can make it in Minecraft anyway. And it should be a suitable place for you to battle it out with your friends. But I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.